in an old web encrypted network, what the situation was, was you'd have an access point with a, uh, a password, a pre-shared key, and what that means is all the stations associated would know the same key as the access point. And when they associate, they use that key to encrypt the traffic. Now what that means is the traffic that goes between uh, station 1 here to the access point can also be decrypted by station 2. So basically station 2 can eavesdrop on station 1 because the key has been shared around by everyone and everybody knows the key. In a WPA or WPA2 network, things work a little bit differently. You have an access point and you've got a number of stations, just like before, and they all have the pre-shared key, okay, the access point and all the stations. But that pre-shared key is not the key that's used to encrypt the traffic. So when station 1, let's say that's station 1, that's station 2, station 1 associates to the access point, they negotiate the traffic key for traffic just between that station and the access point. And they do that through the uh, four-way handshake. And shake. Okay, and during that process, they use the pre-shared key and a number of other variables, like uh, an SNUNTS, ANUNTS, and the MAC addresses, they use that to create a pairwise key for traffic between the AP and that station. What that means is when another station comes along and he associates to the access point, he'll do the same thing over here. So they'll make a pairwise key for that station and the access point. Now, what that means is the traffic key being used between station 1 and the AP is different to the station 2 and the AP. So station 2 cannot eavesdrop on station 1's traffic. The only slight variation of that is for multicast and broadcast because multicast and broadcast has to be understandable by all the stations that are out there. So if there's another station, its pairwise key will also be different but the group key will be the same for all of them. So for unicast traffic between the access point and a station, the others cannot decrypt it. The only way this can be decrypted, um, there is always a way, is if, if you've got hold of the pre-shared key and that four-way handshake exchange. If you've got that information, you can decrypt the traffic then that's going between that station and the access point. I've got the laptop here doing pings. It's just pinging the access point's IP address. Now, we're on a WPA2 network, so the traffic's encrypted just between that laptop and the AP. Now over here on the capture, what we can see is that there's data frames going through and acknowledgements. Now that's just 802.11 traffic. We can't actually tell that they're pings, all we know it's some form of data. I mean we know they're pings because I'm doing them right here myself, but an eavesdropper wouldn't know. Right, now what I'm going to do is associate to the access point so we can capture the four-way handshake. And there it is. Now in Wireshark what you can do is if you go to Edit, Preferences, Protocols, IEEE 802.11, click on Enable Decrypt, and then set the decryption key for your network. So there's my key, and then the network name is just A. And apply that, and go back into it. Now, when I run a ping on the laptop, and I'll just take away the heap filter off so we can see everything that's happening. What you see now is the actual data that's going through. We can see we've got, we've got pings happening here. We can see really what's going on rather than just some form of data. And the reason we can decrypt that is because we've got that four-way handshake that we captured and we know the pre-shared key or the passphrase that makes the pre-shared key. And Wireshark can then decode everything that's going through the air.